When watching Kentucky's offense this summer, the post-up came through as a clear point of emphasis. That might not be too much of a surprise. John Calipari has generally done a good job in the past of being flexible enough with his offense to cater to his personnel. With the signing of Reed Travis and the return of Nick Richards and PJ Washington, they do have the personnel to post up. Here you can see Kentucky's points per games off of post ups relative to the NCAA average during that time. While the average has remained relatively steady over the last several years, Kentucky has been more up and down. 2015 was by far Kentucky's most post up heavy season. That team had Carl Anthony Towns, Willie Cauley-Stein, Dakari Johnson, and Trey Lyles. This year's team probably won't reach that level, but might wind up approaching it. The post-up, at least as a means to directly generate scoring, has gone out of style in the NBA with the rise of analytics. But it remains as a much more relatively efficient offensive play at the college level. That doesn't mean all post-ups are created equally, and I'll talk about the good and the bad later in the video. One issue with pounding the ball inside and fighting for position is it tends to detract from the modern style of spread offense that is free-flowing. Some would disagree with this. Here's a video of Tom Izzo when asked about toughness at Big Ten Media Day. Most guys don't love the physical nature anymore because everybody wants, you know, free-flowing and this and that. But in all honesty, that usually, I mean, what, what did you think of Villanova two of their th three years? They were pretty smash mouthy. Now they have guards that could do things, but they are getting after you. They are tough. Sure, Villanova was a tough team, but they were also extremely free flowing on offense. I'm not entirely sure if Izzo is trying to make this point, but it sure seems like he sees toughness and free flowing offense in contrast with each other. I wanted to make this video about how veteran coaches need to move from this idea and let their teams open up the court and shoot more threes, but that's actually not the case. There's little to no correlation between coaching age and the amount of threes their team takes. So let's get back to Kentucky instead and look at how they are generating their post-ups as a function of the offense. This is from a summer practice where they are drilling their most common post-up action. Brad Calipari comes off a pin down from Richards, which then automatically triggers a duck in by Richards for a post-up. The drill focuses on the timing and location of both players in order to get the ball into the post. I'll show you this action run in live play in a minute. These are the 25 recorded possessions where Kentucky took a shot out of a post up. This data is probably a little different than what you're thinking. It's not just the shots out of post ups, but also any second chance shots that occurred later in the possession. Kentucky only shot 48%, but still managed 1.24 points per possession by getting offensive rebounds and drawing fouls. The sample size is very small here, and it's something that I'll definitely be tracking during the season. Here you can see the basic action we saw in practice with Hero coming off the pin down and Travis ducking in. The same two guys are involved again, but this time the ball gets entered directly into the post from the top. This entry will be very difficult to make against well-trained defenses. No post entries from the top is a fairly widespread rule for a defensive scheme. The main reason for the pin down duck-in is that the big guarding the pin down is tempted to give help to the guard. As soon as he helps and stops focusing on his man, the duck-in happens quickly and good post position can be gained. Some of the UK bigs have a bad habit of not actually screening, making it easier for the defense to drive the post position out. Reed Travis was the Kentucky big to receive the most post ups. He's an extremely physical guy and theoretically is a great fit for the pin down duck in. But his Kentucky debut was just so so. Teams often sent two guys at him. Instead of evaluating the floor and looking for an open guy, Travis spun off of the double for some tough hook shots. Hero is the open man here, but Travis misses him. And on this play, the open man is PJ Washington. Travis will fight and claw for deep post position. Catching it in a position to be able to score immediately will be key for his offensive efficiency. Coming off a poor freshman season, Richard's surprised in the Bahamas. He was efficient and showed an improved touch. He doesn't have Travis's motor, but he does have the length to bother smaller bigs. This is really good footwork on the baseline for an easy basket.
here his duck in starts all the way at the three point line. Not a good recipe for deep post position. Opponents will be happy to live with this action and result. Don't get me wrong, Kentucky's going to be really good this year pretty much regardless of how often they post up. Even if they don't shoot a particularly high percentage in the post, they can negate that to some extent by offensive rebounding and drawing fouls. But properly defining what a good and bad post touch is, as well as using the post as a way to kick out for shooters and cutters, would take Kentucky's offense to another level of efficiency.